Hi everyone, so far we've tried to cluster data according to a couple of strategies. One strategy was partitioning data and the other was hierarchical data. Today we're going to cover another approach which is called density-based clustering and we're going to see the most popular algorithm there which is called dbscan. So here you have a couple of examples of k-means and pam. Remember that pam is using this idea of the video aid and k-means is less robust to that because you're calculating the center of mass of the data. And this is why you have some situations like this. It looks like PAM is doing much better than k-means, but the problem is that we are just using a couple of clusters, but clearly the data has more than two clusters. Here you can see that when we increase the number of clusters, then PAM is also not working very well. And actually we have the same problems with hierarchical data. In this case, actually Agnes is the, the best one, but still we, we are not capturing this cluster there. And the problem is that we have some problems and the problems come from these parts of the graphs in which we have different convexity in the data. What about our new friend, Gaussian Mixer Models? And you can see that they are not doing much better. And why is that? Because again, if you take a look at the data, you can see that these ellipsoids, regarding the fact that you can play with the orientation and the side, they are not capturing the, the concavity of this problem. So this is called the convexity problem, because only you're going to classify objects which have some, a very well-defined shape like this, but you don't have these invaginations out there. One possible solution came almost 25 years ago in this great paper that you should read by Esther Kriegel, Sander and Shu. And the idea was the following. So imagine that I ask you, how many clusters can you identify there? So you can stop the video and try to answer. Probably you, uh, you've seen something like this. So here you have four clusters, here you have three or four, and that depends if you have realized about this gap. And here you can also have, say, three or four, and again, you. That depends if you have recognized this, this small cluster there. Of course, you have some points there that you could be saying that they belong to their own cluster, but to me, this is more or less like noise. And why our brain is so good at trying to classify, but all the algorithms that we have seen so far, they are not performing that good. And the problem is that it's related to this idea of density. So whenever we see a higher density of points, our brain is going to try to identify the shape or the, or the, the envelope of, of this structure. And the other thing that these guys were trying to solve was how to distinguish between actual data and noise. So this point clearly is not important, but all the points here clearly are relevant. And of course, we should deal with that dichotomy. So let's borrow some notation from that paper and let me introduce some ideas. So we only have two hyperparameters. One hyperparameter is epsilon, which is the radius of neighborhood around a point x. And the second parameter is the mean number of points uh, or the mean number of neighbors around that radius. So let's take this cloud of points and let me illustrate you the role of those parameters. So imagine that we want to classify x, y, and z according to the neighbors. And let's say that we take the minimum number of points equals to five and the radius is something like that. So in this case, you can say if you count you at one, two, three, four, five. So x is surrounded by at least five points in this radius epsilon. So we're going to call x a core point. If we do the same analysis for y, you can see that we only have four points, but one of the points is a core point. So in that case, we're going to call y a border point. But if we do that for, for z, we see that inside this radius, we only have one or at, at most two neighbors, but none of its neighbors is a core point. So in those cases, we define z as a noise point. Okay, so now we are equipped to understand the dbscan algorithm described in that paper. So first of all, we're going to find core points. So remember, we're going to use the minimum number of points equal to five. So in this case, we have these three green points. Now for each point, if it's not already in a cluster, we're going to create a new cluster. So imagine that randomly, we choose one of these core points. In, in that case, this, this green one there. Okay, so this is going to be the new cluster. Step number three, we're going to connect recursively all the density connected points, meaning that all the points which are at a distance lower than epsilon are going to belong to that cluster. In this case, this point, this, 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 and that's all. And now step number four, we're going to iterate through all the remaining unvisited points in the data set. So for each core point, we're going to repeat the process. So now imagine that we choose this randomly and we repeat, but you can see that all of them are already in, one, in the same cluster, but we have to include this one. And now we jump into this one. This is not in a cluster, so we're going to create a new cluster again. And now we have these points iteratively assigned to that cluster. When we have finished this process, we see that the remaining points are going to be noise points. So this is the final clusters removing the noise points. Okay, how can we estimate parameters? Because we have two hyperparameters, epsilon and the, min and the minimum number of points in that area, but this is not going to be an easy task. So let me show you a kind of algorithm to try to identify them. 
So let's try to choose, an, I guess, so starting from 3, but sometimes for large data set we can use 5, 6, or even 10. And then we calculate the distance from every point to its k nearest neighbor. So it's a kind of k and n algorithm there. And now we're going to plot the distances of increasing order until we find the knee or the elbow, as you wish, and then try to estimate epsilon as the y coordinate of that knee. So we're going to do that using this function k and a this plot. And when you do that, you see this kind of structure. So this is the elbow or the knee that I was mentioned above. You can see that more or less for for epsilon equals 1.4. You can see that you are in the middle of this elbow. So now we're going to use this algorithm, dbscan, using the data, and now we're plugging this value of epsilon there, and this is the final outcome. So as you can see, we have done a pretty, a pretty good job, actually, except for these two points. All of them are classified accordingly to our intuition. You could say that maybe this should be belong to the wrong plot, but it doesn't make any sense because you can see that you have a breach of points there. So actually it makes more sense to classify them all together. What is happening there? Well, probably that's related to the choice of EPS. So if we choose change from EPS 1.4 to 1.5, these points are going to be inside. And now the you can see why this is going to work for this sort of data set. So whenever you start with one of these points, you're going to find the core points around there. You're going to have a lot of core points in this data plot. So the only thing that you have to do is incorporating all those core points inside the previous clusters. And of course, here we have some some chances that th this is going to be classified in the same cluster and that is going to depend on the choice of EPS for instance but you can see that this is going to be a pretty good job with this sort of data sets. So there is an alternative to dbscan and they are called spectral methods I'm not going to explain them here but just in case you are interested in this sort of methodology and the idea is really simple so instead of trying to use distance as we saw with k-means spectral clusters try to do the following so first of all try to find nearest neighbors so you, you have again to decide which, what is a nearest neighbor, how, how to define how many of them are you going to count. And then you compute the adjacency matrix. So imagine that part of this graph is, is like this and you have some data points and these points are connected according to this distance. And then you define this adjacency matrix. And the, the name spectral comes from the idea that you're going to find the spectrum of the matrix. So the, the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of the matrix. When you do this for this adjacency matrix, you find something like that, and then you can do some sort of re uh, uh, dimensionality reduction like PCA in order to find the data structure. And these are very, very accurate, but the problem with these algorithms is that they are much slower than DBS can. And that's all for today.